I'm Jules Pipe, the Deputy Mayor for Regeneration Planning and Skills. London is home to some of the most talented architects and designers in the world. Their creativity and imagination supports London to maintain its status as a world-leading city for design. The Mayor and I are harnessing this talent through our Good Growth by Design programme, which is our vision for a built environment for all Londoners. The Mayor's vision for Good Growth is supported by the creative sector by providing innovation and excellence in all parts of uh, the built environment. It's something that's really critical to keeping the vitality of the city uh, relevant and it's something that really supports the agenda of the Mayor. A vibrant cultural sector benefits London by increasing diversity, by making sure that we engage with all the citizens and all the kind of production that's happening in our city and by supporting its economy and by giving London the unique identity that it's had for so long. There are two huge issues, in my view, facing sort of society at large and my industry, the built environment, and they are inequality and climate breakdown. And these things, I believe, need to be at the forefront of all of our minds for every project, for everything, really. It's really interesting to kind of see what are the kind of systematic things that need to change. So the project um, that we're doing in Ilford, where the client is very enlightened and very kind of interested in circular economy, there are still a number of problems that we come up against. And what's very interesting about sitting both on the circular economy sounding board and being in practice is that you see both sides of that and you see that you know we're sitting in rooms in City Hall thinking about like what are the kind of policies and what are the ideals that we should be seeking to implement and promote but then on the other hand on the ground what is actually quite difficult day-to-day -day real life to achieve. So we talk about throwing away but where is a way? We only have this earth so we need to transition to an economy which doesn't take, make, and throw away, but it actually extracts, uses, recycles, and returns the materials to new use in a way that mimics the way nature works. There's no waste of such a nature because either things are used for a very long time or waste products become the basis of new things and new life, and that is a fundamentally new kind of economy, and it's called the circular economy. We need to be setting standards, and London sets the standards for the whole of the UK. The standards are, are high compared to many countries, and that affects the quality of your life. Standards affect the quality of your life. So we review this and we have a look at how people live, accommodating different needs, different cultures. We had an opportunity on the Olympic Park to introduce the multi-generational house, and that was a typology that came out of need. Always reviewing our standards and typologies means that we're thinking about how London is growing and how society is affected by economy, affected by affordability, and affected by social change. When we design public spaces, or architecture in general, we're trying to make it inclusive because we're thinking about the people that will use it. And the more broad a range of people it can reflect in its identity, the more people that will feel comfortable and empowered to use it. What is a city for if it's not for the people that live there? And design is a key to making those spaces amazing and inspiring and uplifting. We go on about how amazing the Victorians were, but we are just as amazing. We can build a city that's 10 times more inspiring than them. We just need to invest in design, invest in the greatest engineers, and invest in the greatest thinkers. And actually all of those live in London. So rather than us inspiring other cities to be great, let's make our own city great. The mayor's vision for good growth, we look at it from a 24-hour perspective and that it's relevant 
for businesses and Londoners and places of public realm during the day, but also at night. The mayor's vision for good growth will help us ensure that our city stays that way for the future. The Mayor's Nighttime Commission have made some really forward-thinking recommendations that we're hoping to carry forward. One of those is around the public realm at night, and that is why we need architects and designers to be working with us as we ensure that London is fit for the future as a 24-hour city. We have a great opportunity for our nighttime economy uh, to contribute to the vibrancy of our high streets. 92% of local authorities in the UK believe that the nighttime economy will help boost our high streets. This is at a time when high streets are you know, facing some challenges and we know that 50% of Londoners outside of central London work on the high street. These are absolutely vital places for our well-being during the day and at night, and we ignore them at our peril. The Mayor's vision for good growth. Well, it, it's good because, it, you know, it allows people to tell their own stories and their work. I don't really believe in kind of designing work that has no meaning to, to the audience or to um, an individual. I think for me, creating work that you can kind of connect with is really powerful. And using these found objects that I think have narratives and stories and trying to give it another new narrative, um, for me, that's quite exciting. I think it's something we should all do together to push this culture forward, um, because I think there's so much beauty in these old objects um, that we discard and think they're no longer no use. But if we understand the importance of design and the importance of recycling and how powerful and impactful it is in our culture and society, we can make a change in design and a change to how we live our lives. I think the public sector is really powerful in supporting active participation in the city. So good growth doesn't just happen. Good growth needs facilitation and it needs support. So the public sector should be there, it should be leading the way, it should be challenging and it should be forward thinking and it should be telling us how we do things. So with mechanisms like public practice and with resources of the public sector being well supported, that's how we can deliver that. Matt and Fiona is an organisation which enables young people to set the brief and design their own spaces and places and then be directly involved in fabricating them. We work with a huge team of volunteers and in particular young people obviously to make these projects happen. Quite often we work with young people who might have been marginalised in society and told that they don't fit the mould. We want to turn that on its head and say that actually it's, it's the mould that's wrong and that all young people's ideas and imaginations and visions are valid and that we should be enabling them to have their say. Good Growth by Design seeks to harness London's world-leading design talent to make the city work for all its citizens. We've recruited 50 Mayor's design advocates to work with City Hall and councils across London. The advocates will provide a pool of talent pushing forward the Good Growth by Design programme, setting ambitious design standards, undertaking rigorous design reviews and investigating the challenges facing London's built environment so that London's public bodies can deliver the quality of buildings and public spaces that will enrich London's communities today and for generations to come. It's so important to foster an inclusive design sector because we know that creative arts and the cultural sector is enriched when the most are contributing to that sector. It's, uh, it really stifles itself when it's just coming from a single source, but is much richer when everybody's contributing. And the diversity of the city and the richness of the city is one of the unique things of London. And if, when that is marshaled into the cultural sector, it makes London an even more unique city. Every generation seems to not just uh, destroy the work of the last generation, but actually build upon, creating a better city. And I think that you find that there's a kind of wonderful new generation of architects in all sectors, from design to architecture, to production, to theater, to creativity, that is 
really very inspiring. And what's very encouraging to me is that they're becoming much more diverse. It's not just from one uh, racial group, it's really from the diversity of London and they're all being celebrated. And I think this is something that needs to be not just celebrated, but also supported to be more sustainable and to be encouraged so that there's more diversity in our city, which makes our city better and stronger.